President Trump is reversing himself now on Robert Mueller, saying the special counsel should not testify before lawmakers. But on Friday, the president said this about whether Mueller should speak to Congress. Mr. President, should Mueller testify? Would you like to see him testify? I don't know. That's up to our attorney general, who I think has done a fantastic job. I want to bring in Abby Phillips, CNN White House correspondent, who's here with us in New York. Joe Lockhart, former Clinton White House press secretary and CNN political commentator, who's always here with us in New York. And Ellie Honig, <laughs> former federal prosecutor and CNN legal analyst. Abby, I want to start with you. This is a shift from the president. He was going to leave it up to Bill Barr before. Bill Barr has made it clear he's okay with Robert Mueller testifying. So what happened? Well, the president wants to put an end to this. I mean, he's wanted that for a long time, but I think he's been trying to be a little bit more zen about it, trying to leave it to bar, hoping that this is going to all end up well for him. But, you know, in some ways, I think we have to make a distinction between Trump, Trump's behavior um, as it relates to the special counsel uh, and what actually the impact of Mueller's testimony might be. Even though he seems to be extremely worried about it, saying he doesn't think Mueller should testify, um, that's just the president, I think, uh, just based on how he's behaved throughout this, this probe and, and how he interprets all of this congressional oversight. That's him just saying to Congress, I don't want to give you even an inch, but I don't think we should read that as a sign that he thinks that there is some kind of um, you know, smoking gun that Mueller could reveal that is, is extremely damaging to him. Uh, he tends to be on the side of wanting to push back against Congress, uh, and he's just expressing his his true views on this. And the shift is really just a shift in him. Uh, you know, he's no longer willing to leave it to Bill Barr, but that should be no surprise. He rarely wants to leave these things mm. up to other people. But what skin is it off the president's nose, Joe? I mean, what what White House resources will be taxed by Robert Mueller going to talk to Congress? Well, I don't think that there, there won't be any. I think the difference between Friday and Sunday was Friday he was in front of cameras, and I think he didn't want to get into a discussion about why Bar, uh, Mueller shouldn't testify. Sunday was a tweet, and that's, that's not a debate. That's a proclamation. I think he's, I think I agree with Abby that they want to stonewall as a strategy because I think they're trying to bait the Democrats into going to impeachment, thinking that they won't, that it's all a big bluff and Democrats will give up. Uh, but I do think they're worried and should be worried about Mueller's testimony. Uh, there was a poll out this weekend that 3% of Americans had read the Mueller report. What Bob Mueller does is he animates that. It's, you know, it's, it's like bringing it, it's, you know, it's a book to a movie. This will be dramatic. Um, uh, Mueller, you know, won't be theatric, uh, but it will be dramatic to go through piece by piece what's in the uh, Mueller report, and the president definitely doesn't want that to happen. I, I do want to know that this book, Amanda Wakes Up, <laughs> has been optioned, correct? All right, just say. <laughs> I was listening. wondering why you guys were laughing at me during that answer. No. A book to a movie, no, a book to just, a movie. We just have our own private it, it joke has all been times optioned. It has been optioned. The program. Ellie Honey, uh, Abby Phillips says the president isn't scared about something specific from Mueller. It's just obstructionist. Well, if you were going to make news by asking Robert Mueller a question, or another way of saying this is what questions do you think the president should worry about that could go to Robert Mueller? Yes, so a couple questions might really be keeping the president up at night if Robert Mueller has to answer them in person. First of all, if not for the infamous DOJ policy against indicting a sitting president, would you have indicted Donald Trump for obstruction of justice? It's a very direct question. That's a good one. Thanks. <laughs> Your book was good, too, I read it. Yeah, um, yeah. He, has, <laughs> he has taken a, a lot of slack for this, Robert Mueller, including from Bill Barr last week, right? Bill Barr attacked him. Emmett Flood in the letter we saw said he did not make a thumbs up or thumbs down decision. He's taken a, a lot of heat for it. And this could be his chance to say, OK, you want a thumbs up or thumbs down? I'm not so sure Bill Barr and Donald Trump want to hear that answer. That's a question I would have for him. Um, who did you intend to decide obstruction? Robert Mueller, right? You didn't decide it. You must have intended somebody. Did you want Bill Barr to come in and do what he did? Or did you really have Congress in mind would be the other one. And then the third one, I would want to ask him about all the, all the different points where Bill Barr and he are at odds with one another, right? Bill Barr threw down the gauntlet with him and picked a fight with him last week. And I would want Mueller to have a chance to straighten things out about the letter. When you sent that letter to Bill Barr, in what ways specifically did Bill Barr misrepresent your findings? Well, the good news, Abby, is that um, President Trump and Vladimir Putin agree on the outcome of this. This is strange it, that to hear from the president about 
the phone call, the, the very uh, congenial phone call that he had with Vladimir Putin, it's a little bit like talking to the burglar who broke into your neighbor's home and, and being congratulatory to each other about the outcome of that. It's just strange yeah. to hear the president once again side with Vladimir Putin over Robert Mueller, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I think we can safely say the president is not particularly concerned about the burglary. He, he didn't bring it up. He really rarely brings it up uh, in public or, or with Vladimir Putin. Uh, but this is one of those cases uh, of the president really getting in his own way. On Friday morning, the job numbers came out. They were great for him. The Mueller probe is over. He was feeling really good. And so what does he do? He calls Vladimir Putin. And the first thing that he does is say to Putin, essentially, uh, we can start over. We can restart this relationship. And this is what he's wanted to do all along. And so it is strange it, because I think given all the, the information that's in the Mueller report, you would think that the president would bring up the issue of r Russian interference, uh, say to Putin, don't do this again. But it's not strange because it falls with President Trump's very clear pattern. He wants to normalize relations with Putin. He's been waiting for this to all be over in order to do that. And he took the very first opportunity he could to try to do that by basically uh, having like a, a jovial moment with Putin on the phone. He, the president was basically describing Putin as smiling, but it wasn't even a video conference. It was a telephone call. Uh, they were clearly in a good mood in this conversation, joking with each other about the Mueller investigation, which is really extraordinary. Such a good mood, he could see him smile, even though there was no smile. actual picture. <laughs> to show it. Look, I think it's a fair question to ask whether the president is concerned about Russian meddling in the next election. I, I, you know, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, is. Mike Pompeo bristled at that yeah. question. But it's a fair over the question. Weekend, and acting as though, like, we've done more than anybody. But, yeah. but again, it is very confusing when you hear the president calling the culprit. And, and our reporting shows that the president, this is not something that aides believe the president wants to talk about. There have been very few meetings on election interference in this White House compared to other things like the border crisis, which he believes is a national security emergency. White House aides are clear. This is something President Trump only deals with intermittently. He does not want to talk about it as often as a lot of other things. All right, Facebook kicked some people uh, off over the last several days. Um, awful. Oh, horrible. I mean, conspiracy theorists, just the most disgusting conspiracy theorists, you know, the ones who don't think that, for instance, Sandy Hook in Newtown happened, things like that. You know, InfoWars, Paul Nealon, who's anti-Semite, uh, who has said anti-Semitic things in Wisconsin. This is what the president has said about this move. He stuck up for these people. I am continuing to monitor the censorship of American citizens on social media platforms. This is the United States of America, and we have shown what's known as freedom of speech. We are monitoring and watching closely. Joe, what message does that send when the president is protecting Infowars? Well, remember, one of the first interviews the president did upon being elected during the transition was with Alex Jones, and he has praised InfoWars, InfoWars being the people who said that Sandy Hook didn't happen, it was a hoax, you know, uh, you know uh, 20 kids, you know, uh, uh, killed. Um, uh, this is part of uh, the president's political strategy to keep his base whipped up, to retweet white nationalists, to play in this conspiracy game. And, you know, we don't need any more uh, evidence that, uh, you know, for instance, he doesn't care about Russian meddling because he thinks it helped him. He, he knows it helped him, and he'll, he'll continue to do these things. What it does is it debases the presidency. Um, uh, I, when you have someone who is willing to amplify using the largest bully pulpit in the world, you know, crazy conspiracy theorists, bigots, you know, um, anti-Semites. He degrades the office uh, by, by doing this. And, you know, he's going to continue this fight. Oliver Darcy said over the weekend, I think it was Oliver, who said InfoWars doesn't need to be on Facebook because they have the president to make their case for them. Yeah, they have a great megaphone. Thank you all.